today we're going to be talking about Stokes parameters. Now Stokes parameters are basically just a convenient way to describe polarization. So you may think, why would we want to talk about polarization? Well, it's very interesting because when you look at space and you see things that are polarized, usually that points to some kind of large scale magnetic field. This is interesting because some things have very large magnetic fields such as pulsars, and you also can uh, note interesting things about dust emission. So basically, for a quick refresher, uh, electromagnetic waves have an E-field and a B-field, and polarization speaks to the orientation of the electric field. There are many ways it can be oriented. One of the simplest ones is a linear polarization. For example, here you see something linearly polarized along the y-axis. You also have circular polarization, where the electric field is rotating between the x and y-axis. Likewise, you can have something linearly polarized along the x-axis. Note you can see that the uh, wave is not reading out in the Y. And then you can also have the left-hand polarization where it's rotating from the X to the Y. You see it's in both the X and the Y axes. What can you actually measure? When you're actually measuring something with, for example, a dipole antenna, you're reading out a voltage to measure an electric field. Now let's say you take your dipole, you can just orient it at the sky. Let's call this zero degrees. Then you can take it and turn it perpendicular, and you say this is reading out 90 degrees. Likewise, you can measure the positive 45 and the negative 45. Also a note, an aside on triangles, if we just label the 0, the 90, and the negative 45, you can get the negative 45 from just the 0 and 90 measurement because geometry works. Additionally, you can measure a right-handed circular polarization and a left-handed circular polarization as seen in the animation. Now that you've done such a good job of measuring all of these different alignments of your dipole and your circular polarized antenna, you want to describe the polarization that you've received. For this, we'll use the Stokes parameters. The four Stokes parameters are I, Q, U, and V. The first Stokes parameter is I. This measures the overall intensity of the radiation that you are measuring. First, take two orthogonal bases, for example, the 0 and the 90 degree polarizations that you've measured, square them and add them. This encapsulates the total power in the incident radiation. But if you want to describe how linearly polarized it is, you'll have to difference your two orthogonal bases. Q is the difference of your first zero polarization, so 0 minus 90, both of those being squared. However, let's imagine you have a wave incident that is polarized at the 45. That would let Q be 0. However, it is polarized. Therefore, you need a second basis, which is U or a second Stokes parameter, which is U, to accurately describe all of the polarization. This is where you take the two diagonal terms and subtract them. Also, you need V to describe the circular polarization. This is subtracting the contributions from the right-handed circularly polarized incident radiation from the left-handed. To better describe this, let's take an example. If you have unpolarized light, I will be positive, but since it's unpolarized and randomly aligned in any direction, You'll have equal intensities in the 0, the 90, the 45, and the negative 45, and the right hand and the left hand. So all of those, Q, U, and V, will be 0. If you have something aligned along the 0 polarization direction, again, I will be positive because you are receiving some incident radiation. Q will be positive because there is a positive amount in 0, nothing in 90. U will be 0 because there is an equal amount if you decompose 0 into 45 and minus 45, similarly with V. The exact opposite argument applies to the negative 45 polarization. I will be positive, Q will be zero, you will be a negative number because the negative 45 is where the incident radiation is, and V will be zero. For completeness, you can also play the same game with right-handed circular polarization. I will be positive, Q and U will be zero, and V will be positive. However, these are obviously extremes. It's very rare that you set a dipole up to the sky and you've exactly aligned it with a zero, or only a negative 45, or only a right-handed circular polarization. For this, it is interesting to introduce a concept called a polarization ellipse. Here you have an ellipse and a way to describe polarization you can receive that is an elliptical polarization, or a combination of linear and circular polarization. You have H, which is the handedness of it, A and B, which are the major and minor axes, and theta, which is the angle of tilt off from a perfect circle. You can take what you measure in I, Q, U, and V and describe them in terms of A, B, H, and theta as seen in the equation to the right. From this, you can understand what the overall elliptical polarization ellipse is. 
Additionally, you can also identify the total polarization fraction of your incoming light. For that, you want to take the total polarized power and divide it by the total power incident. We know the total power is i, and to get the total polarized power, you square q, u, and v, and take the square root of that. From there, you can determine whether you do in fact have polarized light. So there you have it. What we've learned is that polarization helps you probe different phenomena. We can use Stokes parameters as a convenient basis to describe what we measured. And from there, we can additionally describe a polarization ellipse to characterize what is being observed. Thank you.